Hey guys, this is Get Jesse, and I'm here with my introduction to all the StarCraft II Zerg buildings. Previously, I already did a Terran building guide, so you can go check that out on my channel. And later on, I'll be doing the same thing for the Protoss buildings. So with that said, let's get started. The uh, I've arranged three bases here, and I've broken them up into Tier 1 buildings, Tier 2 buildings, and Tier 3 buildings so that it's easy to distinguish at what point you get which buildings. So let's start out with the hatchery, that's the basic building, it's like the command center for the Terran. It's pretty much unchanged from StarCraft 1. You can morph it into a lair, you can research burrow, got your select larva. Uh, pretty much the only new thing about the hatchery from StarCraft 1 is that now you can build a queen. And of course, like I said in my Zerg units guide, the queen is essential for every Zerg base. You always build a queen because it has special abilities that help you uh, that help you macro your buildings, like uh, the increased larva spell, which gives you extra larva production, and the little creep tumor thing that expands the creep. Something cool about the hatchery is that even after you upgrade the lair and gain access to the new upgrades like the overlord upgrades is that now you can research them at the actual hatchery without it having to be a lair. So that's cool. Uh, and there's some larva that popped out. Okay, moving on. Next up you build your spawning pool which is required to go into tier 2 and the spawning pool gives you access to zerglings it gives you access to the other buildings in the tier 1 tech tree and it has some zergling upgrades and they're the same zergling upgrades that are from starcraft 1 you got the speed upgrade at tier 1 and then you got the attack speed upgrade at tier 3 and then of course there are the vesping geyser uh, extractors which you can see right here Nothing much to say about those. Uh, next up is the Evolution Chamber. This is where the Zerg upgrade attack and defense upgrades for their ground units. It's just like StarCraft 1. You got your one ground armor upgrade and then you got your ranged attacks and melee attacks uh, upgrades. Um, then you have your defensive structure, Spine Crawler. It's basically a Oh, what do you call those things from StarCraft 1? You know, uh, sunken colonies. It's basically like a sunken colony from StarCraft 1. The other main difference though is that now you can uproot them and change their position to someplace else. So that's pretty cool. And then it takes a few seconds for him to burrow down into the ground before he can attack again. And uh, he cannot attack while he's moving around and unburrowed. Uh, he does normal da damage and does extra damage against armored units. And he can only attack ground units. And I'm not sure why I'm calling him a he, it's probably an it rather than a he. Uh, moving on, there's the Roach Warren. And that allows you to build roaches of course. And then there's a couple of upgrades to the roaches. Then there's also the Baneling Nest, which allows you to morph the Zerglings into Banelings. And there's a movement speed upgrade for the Banelings. And like I said, there's the Creep Tumors. And when the Queen makes the initial Creep Tumor, that Creep Tumor can continue to make free Creep Tumors. And it just kind of creates a line of Creep Tumors wherever you want to go. And uh, that's a useful thing to do around the base because it, since the creep increases the movement speed of your zergling or of your zerg units, it's good to spread the creep tumors around and kind of inch toward the enemy base so you can have a, a creep highway. And the last tier one structure is the spore crawler, which is basically the same thing as a spore colony from StarCraft One. It can detect cloaked units. Um, new thing in StarCraft 2 is just like the spine crawler is that 
the sport crawler can uproot and change position and then it burrows itself into the ground you have to wait a few seconds and the sport crawler does normal damage it doesn't do extra damage to any armor types and you can unlock the sport crawler after you build the evolution chamber okay so that's all the tier two the tier one buildings so let's move on to the tier two buildings of course you get to tier two by morphing the hatchery into a lair and once you do that you gain access to the overlord and overseer upgrades and uh, once you get to tier two you can build the hydralisk den which gives you access to the hydralisk and the hydralisk upgrades you can also build a spire which gives you access to moodalis and the moodalis upgrades and later on when you get to tier 3 you can upgrade the spire to gain access to broodlords which I'll get into later uh, also at tier 2 you get access to the nidus network which is uh, like a nidus canal from starcraft 1 the main difference though is that you can from one Nidus network you can build multiple uh, multiple exits so this is uh, this is what an exit looks like right here a Nidus worm and basically what you do to build a Nidus worm you select the Nidus network and then you find a place that you can that you have vision of and then you tell the Nidus network to build a Nidus worm and then it'll start constructing it and then it'll just pop up in that spot and spawn some creep around it and then whatever zerg units that you place inside the nidus network you can spawn them over here so that's pretty cool okay uh... last in tier two is the infant infestation pit and the infestation pit is required to get to tier 3 so it's kinda like the spawning pool in that it's it, it's crucial to the tech tree so if you're gonna play a zerg game more than likely you're always gonna have an infestation pit if the game goes on long enough and the infestation pit gives you access to infestors which is the zerg ground caster and it has a few upgrades for the infestor uh, that's all the tier 2 buildings. Now we'll move on to tier 3. The tier 3 buildings you gain access to after you morph a lair into a hive. And that gives you access to two buildings. First is the Greater Spire, which I mentioned before you morph into a Greater Spire from a normal Spire. And that gives you access to Broodlords. Then there's also the Ultralisk Cavern, which gives you access to Ultralisk, of course, and Ultralisk upgrades. So uh, that pretty much covers the Zerg buildings. I hope you were well informed, and thanks for watching. Next time I'll be doing a Protoss Buildings Guide, so tune in for that. Thanks.